actually love doing these lists because I keep adding things to my bucket list that hopefully I'll actually do by the end of my life. You know? Uh -huh. I'm sure you will. I hope so. I'm sure you will. Great. Well, honestly, I love these lists because it just keeps proving how insanely cool and mysterious our planet can be, and also humans can be. Yeah. And it's uh, some of it's pretty trippy. It's pretty weird. And yeah, and I like that too, which is why we are super excited to bring you the top ten mysterious things you might see for the first time in, in your, your life. life part part four. four. I didn't know I was supposed to join you in on there, but then I got yeah, it. Yeah, again. I switched it up you up. asked for it, and we delivered. We do delivered. <laughs> I actually tried to put that. I said two I was like, no, I can't. I made it work. Anyways, guys, here we go. Let's get started. Number 10, plastic eating enzymes. Finally, a potential solution to the mountains of plastic covering the earth. Thanks to this discovery, we might see a garbage less earth for the first time. There has been some good to come out of 2020 after all. According to an article in CNN posted in September 2020, scientists have created a super enzyme capable of breaking down plastic six times faster than ones previously. The most common thermoplastic is PET, which is used in pretty much everything from clothes to carpet to water bottles, everything. PET is our biggest adversary when it comes to disposable items because it takes hundreds hundreds of years for them to degrade. However, with the new super enzyme, it can start breaking down the structure in a few days. However, this doesn't mean that all the plastic mounds on the earth are gonna dissolve overnight. There is still a long way to go, but hey, it is definitely a step in the right direction and brings us closer to a world without garbage. Hopefully one day, cross fingers. Coming in at our number nine spot, we have autonomous vehicles. If any of you watching have ever gone on a very long and tiring road trip and on the way home looked around the car to a bunch of sleeping passengers, then you probably have thought, man, a self-driving car would be perfect right about now. Well, guess what? Those self-driving cars are here, folks. Self-driving cars have been in development ever since the 1930s, actually. In GM's 1939 exhibit, a man by the name of Norman Bell Geddes created a self-driving car that was guided by radio-controlled electromagnetic fields that were then generated by magnetized metal spikes that were embedded in the roadway. But of course, the self-driving cars of today are much fancier and much more high high tech than that. You basically just turn on your autopilot and the car takes you to your destination, which is pretty cool. Now, while these cars are already on the road in places like Nevada, they aren't without their problems. While they have been in fewer accidents than normal cars, I wonder how much longer it will stay that way when we actually have a mix of you know drivers and auto drivers on the road. One did fatally strike a pedestrian back in 2018. But for now, we have Ford, Audi, and of course the big daddy Tesla with these high tech cars being sold, but until any of them make a model that looks and talks like Kit from Knight Rider, <laughs> I'm not interested. Number eight, the oldest material ever. And no, I'm not talking about your grandmother's dentures. I'm talking about something even older. It was found within a meteorite which fell to Earth in the 1960s in Australia. While studying it, scientists discovered dust particles that are over 7.5 billion years old. That means that these grains were formed before our solar system even became into being. How incredible would it be to like touch something like that? That would be insane. That would just be like a mind blowing moment. These particles were flung out into space by a dying star and managed to find a home on this meteorite. But it continues to get a little interesting. When they crushed fragments of the meteorite into powder, it forms a kind of paste. And this paste curiously has a strange smell scientists literally described as like the scent of rotten peanut butter. Huh? When they dissolved the strange star paste into acid, the end result left only stardust, the oldest ever found on Earth. Coming in at number seven, we have robot co-workers. Hey, hey, remember all those scary movies where the robots slowly take over and start doing things way better than humans and then start becoming much smarter and stronger than humans? So the robots just say, hey there humans, we don't like you no more because you're slowing us down and we think you're filled with human errors. We're just gonna take all of you out and bang! Well, that might be kind of true. We are already seeing some forms of robots helping us in the job site and becoming our coworkers, if you want to call them that. But some disagree that they are actually taking over or taking away our human jobs. Melanie Wise, CEO of Fetch Robotics, says there's been a transition from standard industrial robots to those that are more collaborative, that work with people and are safe to be around. And robots today are taking tasks, not jobs. A job is a composition of tasks, and robots will enable companies to have their associates do the tasks that provide a lot of value 
value and shed the tasks that they don't like to do or those that don't provide as much value to the company. And Fran Katsudis, Executive Vice President and Chief People Officer at Cisco says, we live in a world of constant change. Something that we believe strongly at Cisco is that automation, the leveraging of robotics will make the workplace a more human place where there's more community and that robotics and automation and artificial intelligence will supplement the work that we are doing today. We can probably blame science fiction and the entertainment industry for pushing this idea of job stealing robots. So we will be seeing more and more robots in our workplace by the sounds of it and apparently it's going to be a good thing. But I don't really know how I feel about this one. I feel like we are disconnected from actual human beings enough as it is already. But hey, that's why I work in the arts because I enjoy the human experience. Number six, the platypus ship. Look out all you summer cottagers, a new kind of craft will be hitting the waters and creating wake against your docks which will disturb your boats which kind of sucks but maybe not, we don't know. Or at least I hope it does because this thing is way too cool, it's too cool. It's on my bucket list as of three hours ago when I found this thing on the internet. The platypus is a unique kind of watercraft that works both as a boat and an underwater ship, not like a submarine. You'll see why in a minute, check out this clip. Right? This revolutionary nautical device is a semi submersible ship which can be navigated above and below the waves. The central hull can be submerged up to two meters underwater and cruise among the wildlife. There's also no need for an air tank. It has a hookah system on board with air enough for six passengers. The ship was designed by a French company aptly named after their revolutionary invention, the platypus craft. I for one can't wait to spend like any moment on this type of ship. Like how cool would it be to like be like on a ship underwater? Breathing be great, anyways. Coming in hot at our halfway point and at number five, we have Niga Fireballs. Now, this one is really creepy because, no joke, I had a dream last night that one of the buildings I can see out of my living room window was hit by a massive fireball and the aliens invaded, and I started fighting for my life. It was pretty terrifying. Also, I believe that aliens are actually kind. At least I think they are. Anyway, you might just sometime soon see a massive fireball flaming into the sky. There is very few photos of these amazing phenomena, but many people have recorded sightings of these fire-like balls coming out of the Mekong River in Thailand. These strange sightings have been reported throughout the year, but most of them are recorded during the late fall where some have claimed that a handful to even thousands of these strange balls have risen into the sky. They rise up to 985 feet and then they disappear rapidly. They then glow a reddish orange color, of course which is why they are given the name fireballs. Now, some believe the reason for these mysterious fireballs is that flammable phosphine gas from the river rises up and creates this crazy sight. But that isn't proven and many still don't even buy that hypothesis. So what is it? Aliens? The underwater people that we still haven't met yet? SpongeBob? Who knows? But if you go to Thailand, be sure to check it out or maybe even keep an eye on your own water bodies that are closest to you because I hope there's more of these things out there. Number four, chipping. This this one is for anyone who has ever tapped a key card to get into an office. Businesses in Europe have already started making chipping a voluntary option instead of like you know having your little card. What is chipping you ask? Inserting an RFID chip into your arm or forehead or I don't know, finger, wherever you want. That's right, the future is here folks. We are already tapping on our phones so much we are forgetting our credit card pins. Right? This is the logical next step. Theoretically, this technology won't be just used for getting into the office, but also to get into your house, car, or pay for your morning latte. It may even be able to contain medical information such as allergies and conditions that doctors can scan before putting you into surgery, etc. Biohackers are becoming so obsessed with this technology that they are even seeking amateur help or going to tattoo parlors to get one inserted. These ships also have the potential of protecting an individual from identity theft. But of course, there's also the tracking aspect that I'm not too fond of because, well, I, I just live a very mysterious life. No one knows who I am and I want to keep it that way. Seriously, though the tracking aspect could be helpful in recovering bodies or aiding in missing wilderness cases, it does make one pretty uneasy that Big Brother's always watching. Still, the tech is here and the next time you're offered a work card, you might also have another option. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have time travel. I'm sure many of us have seen movies where they go back in time or travel forward in time with the best movies being Back to the Future trilogy. Go ahead, fight me on that. But did you know that there are actual people out there and scientists who are working on an actual time travel machine right now? No? 
Well, you do now. Ron Mallet is a respected professor of physics, and after having his father pass away at a young age, he has dreamed of traveling back in time and saving him ever since. That's really nice. But the book by H.G. Wells titled The Time Machine is what inspired him at a young age to pursue a life and career in physics to one day make this dream a reality. It was one specific quote from the book that actually sparked it though. The quote was, scientific people know very well that time is just a kind of space and that we can move forward and backwards in time, just as we can in space. Today, Mallet actually has drawn up and made a model of a machine that indeed could help us travel in time. It's a tabletop device and it operates like this, and I quote, First, lasers are used to generate a circulating beam of light. The space inside this ring laser should become twisted like stirring up a cup of coffee. If space is being twisted strongly enough, this linear timeline is going to be twisted into a loop. If time all of a sudden is twisted into a loop, that allows us the possibility of traveling into the past. Whoa. This is also created and inspired by Einstein's theory of space time as well. However, in order to make this machine actually go for a test run, we would need a vast amount of power and a way to make everything shrink into a microscopic scale. So, while time travel machines aren't here just yet, maybe go help our friend Professor Ron Mallet and maybe it could be. But I gotta be honest here, come on, Ron, you couldn't try a DeLorean first? Come on, buddy. Number two, invisible fire, and it brings me great joy to play this clip. The fire! Come back here! But something looks wrong. I mean, he's running around like, like he's on fire. Oh my God! Help me! I don't want to die! Oh, stop jumping, roll! You're not on fire, Ricky Bobby. I'm on fire! An odd title for a thing that you were supposed to be able to see for the first time in your life. But here we are. Invisible fire is actually a real thing, despite the hilariousness Freaky Bobby displayed. Invisible fires are fires ignited by ethanol or alcohol and can barely be seen to the naked eye. The reason being is that they burn blue and are smokeless. Despite the hilarity of that clip, invisible fires are a very real risk for race car drivers, which is definitely what inspired that joke. Here is an actual clip of a race car drivers experiencing an ethanol fire. Though it looks like a bunch of people just like flailing at nothing, they are actually experiencing experiencing an ethanol fire. One deadly case occurred in Baltimore when a tanker truck overturned. Later, actual flames could be seen on the truck, but that was because the ethanol had burned away. Prior to that, the invisible flames were rolling off of the bridge and searing cars below. An additional note, you know the cool thing when waiters light your drink on fire and blow it out? Wait for the drink to cool because there have been cases where the flame like remains, but you just can't see it and you like singe your eyebrows off. True story. Forget the invisible man, invisible fire sounds a lot more dangerous. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, we have HIV vaccines. That's right, over the last year, we may have just come up with the very first successful HIV vaccine. After the release of the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, scientists at Moderna believe that using the same mRNA technology could possibly bring about the first successful HIV vaccine. Testing was proposed to start just last month in adults 18 to 50 years of age. Now, phase one will test the vaccine safety as well as measure immunity and antibody responses. If the vaccine is proven to be safe, they will then go through additional testing. According to the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, creating an HIV vaccine is actually pretty difficult because of how our bodies react to HIV compared to other viruses. Vaccines act like natural infections in the way they stimulate our immune system to make antibodies and attack a virus. But unlike when responding to viruses like smallpox or even polio, our human bodies are blind to HIV. Currently there are 37.7 million people living with HIV around the world and this would be a huge win for science as well as humans if this could go through. So let's keep our fingers crossed, shall we? I hope so. That was really nice. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> and that was yet another list of things that you might see for the first time in your life. All pretty uh, pretty impressive, once again, with the uh, things that we wanted to put on our bucket list, things that we just want to see, things that are just like amazing. I mean, come on. Yeah, honestly, it really is, except I really don't want to be anywhere near an invisible fire. You know, that would suck. You can like, comment, subscribe, or even just like, you know, mail us. Yeah, send us some love, you know. Some owl letters. Yeah, just, yeah, buy pigeon. That would yeah. be really, really nice There's as well. Tons of pigeons yeah. here in Toronto. That'd be great. Anyways, I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. And I've been your host, Dewey Stewart. And until next time, stay, stay sweet, sweet, honey. Boy, Kim Frank. I don't know that song. Is it Spice Girls? Yeah. Spice Girls? I knew that. I knew that. Oh, mom. I knew that yeah. song. Yeah. I knew that, come on. Stop right now. Thank you very much. I need somebody with a human touch. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's okay, Dewey. I don't know the lyrics, man. It's okay. Backstreet.
treat. Back. All right. Anyways. <clears throat> Um, I don't know what I wrote. <laughs> oh. I love these lists because that sounded so fake. <clears throat> that was classy. <laughs> so that were then generated, that were then gener. <laughs> Woo! So cool! Neat! Damn. Hey, hey, remember all those scary movies where the robots slowly. where the robots? Finally, a patoho. Look, okay, this is exciting. Look at all you summer cottagers. Oh. Sorry, I was texting my manager. <clears throat> Go home. <laughs> Go home, Dewey. Go home, Satan. Time is not linear. It's just a ball of wiggly, wobbly, timey, wimey stuff. Anyways, had to say that. Doctor Who. All of a sudden, my ends are just burned off. Anyways, guys, if you want a part five, what should you do?